I'll be speaking on the topic, Mission, an Initiator of Divine Exchange. Mission, an Initiator of Divine Exchange. Mission can be summarized in three words. The first one is God's. God's G-O-D apostrophe S. God's. The second word is divine. The third word is exchange. God's divine exchange. The summary of mission simplified is God's divine exchange. Paul says that there is a mind that is in Christ Jesus from our text this morning. He said, let therefore this mind that is in Christ Jesus be also in our hearts, in our minds. That means there was a mind, there is a mindset that Jesus has that brought mission to you and I, that changed the trajectory of the world completely. What is that mind? It is what I call divine exchange mindset. For anyone to be relevant in God's agenda today, you must acquire the mind of Christ. I thank you for that amen. As your amen, amen is louder, so your angels will be much faster in attending to you. Divine exchange mindset is needed for mission. We need a certain mindset that will help us to engage with mission. So what is this mindset that Jesus has? What is this divine exchange mindset that he has? It's what I call incarnation. What is incarnation? God became man. That is a divine exchange. How can God become man? Till today... No religion on earth can understand this. And this is the, where the core issue of our faith is. This is where the core difference between Christianity and all other religions is. Man, God became man. That's why sometimes when you are preaching, they say, how can your God be man? Yes, God became man. That is mission. So let's look at this mindset. Divine exchange mindset that God became man incarnation. What does it mean? Number one, the eternal God had to die. Spirit became flesh. John chapter 1 verse 4. The eternal God, eternal means he does not die. God is a spirit. In John 1 14, the Bible says, and the word became flesh. God became man and dwelt among us, lived in our midst. And we beheld his glory. We saw him physically as the only begotten of the father. Full of grace and truth. Why should God die? It's a divine exchange. He sent his son to die that you and I may live. God exchanged our eternal death with his physical death. Note it down. God took, a, took up the form of a man, became flesh became physical, became natural to exchange it for our eternity. God through his incarnation decided our eternal destiny. God said we shall not die eternally. Today we have a hope. Today I have a hope. Today you have a hope. Those of us in Christ Jesus, it was a great depth of eternity that was paid for us. John chapter 3 verse 16. The most commonest scripture in the Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. His son became man that you and I may live. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, shall not die, but have everlasting life. Ladies and gentlemen, mission is the initiator of divine exchange. You and I today have a hope of eternal life. Hallelujah. If we close our eyes to death today, we have slept. We have not died. That's why Paul says, let this hope encourage us that Christians don't die. We sleep. I want to plead and, I plead and plead with you somebody today. If you are yet playing church, you are still playing religion. You have trodden underfoot this divine exchange. You need to understand that God became man for you. 
The eternal God lived for 33 years to redeem us. My prayer is that we shall embrace eternal life. Number two, the righteous man died for the unrighteous. The righteous man died for the unrighteous. It's unthinkable. Romans chapter 5 verse 7. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But he died. The righteous died for us. The righteous man died for us. That we may be set free. Today we are free and free indeed. Because the righteous man died for the unrighteous. None of us is good. The third thing you should note from that scripture is that the good man died for the bad people. We are all bad. If you look at the activities that are going on in the world today, you can see the wickedness in our heart. Even as I'm talking right now, people are being slaughtered all over the world. So many wicked things, ritual killings. Several things are happening. You can't even imagine that a human being can have that kind of heart. That is the natural heart. Most of us, we are like that before. Once upon a time, we, we are dead to our consciences. We, we are liars. We, we are cheats. We had done all kinds of things. But the righteous man stepped into our shoes and died for us. Today, we wear the garment of his righteousness. Today, we are free. We are justified by faith. Today, it doesn't matter who you used to be and what you have done. You stand as if you have not done anything. Today, there is no history. There is no record of the past. Today, you can declare, I am saved by grace. Today, a murderer that is saved can stand and preach the gospel. Can we celebrate this divine exchange? The righteous man died for the unrighteous and the good man died for the bad people. Isaiah 53 verse 9. Isaiah 53 verse 9 says, And they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death, because he had done no violence nor any deceit in his mouth. No violence, no deceit, a good man. But he took your place, he took my place. The next thing that he did, he did so many things that we cannot even speak in a year's sermon. So we are just speaking here and there. The immortal and the invisible became mortal and visible. The immortal God the invisible became mortal and visible. First Timothy chapter 1 17. First Timothy 1 17 says, Now unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible, to God who alone is wise, be honor and glory forever and ever. Now unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible the only wise God be honor and glory forever and ever amen he became visible that we may behold his glory a divine exchange the immortal God the invisible God became visible to us Today we can behold him. Today he appeals for salvation. Today he is the mission statement. Today he is the mission agenda. And men are coming to him because he has become visible. He lived on earth. He walked on the streets of Jerusalem. They saw him. They can talk about him. Every author, every religious author recognized that once upon a time, over 2,000 years ago, he walked in Galilee. He walked in Nazareth. He became visible that the we can see him. This God, he walked on the street. He walked on Galilee. They saw him. He ate fish with them. He ate bread with them. Today, he's visible through signs and wonders he's doing in our midst. 
Today you are called on that name. That Philippian said, because of this, because of divine exchange, taking the form of a servant and dying, he gained a name. We have a name. Today you can use that name and it works. You pray in that name and he answers. You plead in that name and he hears. There is a name. We have a name. Have a kato katiriaba. We have a name, Jesus, because of divine exchange. Note again, the creator became a receiver from his creatures. The creator himself, that owned a cattle upon a thousand hills, he created all things. The possessor of the heavens and the earth became poor so that you and I may be wealthy. 2 Corinthians 8 9. 2 Corinthians 8 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus, I love you. That though he was rich, though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty may become rich. I decree and declare, there shall be no poor fellow in this assembly. I told them when we were praying in the first service, the worst thing the devil can do to you in the place of prayer is to tie your mouth to pray. You know you come for prayer, you come for worship, and the enemy escorts you. When it's time to talk, he tells you don't say anything. That is the worst and the most miserable thing the enemy can do because you are before your father, and your father is asking you, what can I do for you? The enemy says, don't say anything. I stand again to decree for my family. By this grace and divine exchange, we shall never beg for bread. We shall never go borrowing. Poverty is a thing of the past in our families. Jesus was so poor that even in the time of his burial, somebody donated a grave. To be able to, 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 to bury him, Somebody say you can use this grave and bury him. He did it intentionally so that you never borrow. That even in death, you will die wealthy. Living legacies for others. Living inheritance for others. The creator exchange our poverty that you and I may be wealthy. The king of kings was publicly humiliated and flogged. Why? That you may receive honor. And by his public ridicule, you are healed. He exchanged for our afflictions. Our afflictions have been taken away. And we must insist on this revelation. Affliction shall not rise up the second time. Why was he rejected? The Bible says that he came to his own and his own rejected him. John chapter 1 and verse 12 says, But as many as receive him, to them he calls the sons of God. He has given the power to be called the children of God. Why was he rejected by his own? That today you and I may be acceptable. And that's why you, you should never say you are suffering from depression. You are suffering from miserable life and loneliness because people reject you by revelation he was rejected that you may be accepted today all over we are seeing people committing suicide last week they said they want to make suicide a, a mission in Kenya a criminal offense because people are dying they are committing suicide so they want to see if it can become a law that if you attempt so, you know, uh, to kill yourself, you will go to jail. Another school of thought say, no, these people need help. They need prayer. They need mental therapy. I tell you here, we've got the answer. Jesus has got the answer. When it comes to a time when somebody wakes up and says, I don't want to live, I want to die. It's because they don't understand that he was rejected, that you may be accepted. That is why mission is compulsory. That we may bring all those suicidal protocols to order. He was chastised for our peace. Isaiah chapter 53. Our anxiousness, our anxiety, we are traded 
on Calvary. And he gave us peace. If you look at Revelation chapter 5, he tells us that Jesus volunteered his service. And the idea to say, all the volunteers in this church, may the Lord remember you. Those who are serving in the kingdom without a salary, serving with your skill, serving with your brain, serving with your time, serving with your money, and you are not paid from the church. You are paid from other places where you work. But your time is spent in church. Your talent is spent in church. I want you to know, Jesus volunteered in heaven in Revelation chapter 5. There was a call. There was a distress call. There was a challenge that we are under bondage. We are captives. We are in prison. Who shall go for us? He volunteered. That's why today when Jesus sees volunteers in church, he gladdens his heart. May you be rewarded. He volunteered. Verse 4 of that scripture, Revelation chapter 4 says, So I wept much. This is John the Beloved. Because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. But one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to lose its seven seals. There was a divine exchange for our captivity, our imprisonment, his voluntary service, or shadows us into freedom, or shadows us into liberty. You can continue to be a slave of fear, a slave of sin, a slave of pain, a slave of depression. If you're under the influence of my voice and your head is almost going crazy because of the things you are going through, you can't handle it any longer. You can't handle it any longer. I have a good news for you. There is an announcement that Jesus has made today. He speaks of your freedom. He speaks of your liberty. I command your mind to return back to soundness in the name of Jesus Christ. If you look at John chapter 19. John chapter 19 verse 28 to 30. I will read it. John 19, 28 to 30. The Bible says, after this Jesus, knowing that all things we are now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I fast. Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on his soap, and put it to his mouth. So when Jesus has received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. Can I hear somebody that believes on the finished work of Calvary say and shout loud and clear, it is finished. It is finished. You are not even hearing yourself. I say, say it is finished. Your neighbor is not hearing you. Shout to your neighbor, I say it is finished. Now let every host of hell Hear that you are saying, this transaction is finished. Declare to hell, it is finished. Jesus said, my mission statement is finished. My vision is accomplished. It is finished. Paid in full. Paid in full. Our poverty has been paid for. For our prosperity. Our sicknesses have been paid for, for our good health. Our peace has been purchased. Our safety has been purchased. Our joy has been purchased in full. It is finished. It is finished. It is finished. Our salvation has been accomplished. It is finished. Everything about you is finished. When you have this understanding, you refuse to give up in life. When you have this understanding, you will stand and say, I don't care how I am feeling, it is finished. Can I have a witness in the house? That in the course of this week, you are going to walk on the street saying it is finished. You are going to move around your house saying it is finished. Satan, it has been fully paid for. My future is secured. My destiny is secured. My wealth is secured. My joy is secured. 
my 30 years to come are secured. It is finished. It is finished. It is finished. Open your mouth and begin to declare it is finished. Open your mouth wide and clear. Begin to declare it is finished. The transaction has been fully paid for. The transaction has been fully paid for. You don't know what the enemy has planned this week. You don't know what the enemy has planned for September. Open your mouth and pray. Hey. 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 No tragedy will hit your house. No shame will come. It is finished. This transaction is finished. Satan, you are a liar. You are an idiot. You are stupid. This transaction is finished. This is exactly what we are declaring to the world in the place of mission. We are telling the world, their sins have been paid for. Their sins have been paid for. Their sins have been paid for. Nobody should be wicked. Nobody should be wicked. It has been fully paid for. Have your seat. Jesus now declared in that Isaiah 53 that I want to see the labor of my soul and be satisfied. Jesus is not satisfied until everybody comes to the saving grace. And that is where mission is. Divine exchange. He says, I am not satisfied. I want to see the travail, the labor of my soul. I labored. I did a divine exchange. I want to see people. That is why in Matthew chapter 30, 11, if you go to our bullet, say Matthew chapter 11, 28 to 30, say, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. There is a call for rest. There is a call for rest. That call for rest comes because he paid the price. And he paid it in full. He paid it in full. The Bible said that he bowed his head. After he says it is finished, he bowed his head. If we are to be in a teaching class, I would have asked you, what is the meaning of bowing his head? He said it is finished. Mission is to tell the world that the devil has lost it completely. That it is finished. That it doesn't matter who you are, you can be saved. It doesn't matter how bad you are, bad, bad, baddest, you can be saved. If there is an English like bad, bad, baddest. There are people who are bad, some are bad, some are baddest, some are baddest too. But sin is sin. Wickedness is wickedness. He bowed his head. What does it mean to bow his head? He said to the father, I surrender to your will. I have done what you asked me to do. Now, I leave the matter in your hands. Brethren, whenever you hear the gospel, we bow our heads. We have done what the father has asked us to do. You are now responsible to respond. There are two ways we can respond to this sacrifice. Number one, our response is to intentionally build an intimate relationship with Jesus. Through salvation and through our service. Through salvation. Salvation. Intimate relationship. He says, my soul will not rest until I see the result of my labor. It is through salvation. How can salvation come to the entire world? It is through mission. COVID has stopped our evangelism. We no longer go on the street because it's not very safe. But we cannot keep up silent. We cannot keep our mouth shut. It's your duty to bring in into the church people who are heavy laden that there will be a divine exchange. Mission has not stopped. As I'm speaking now, Daddy is in Congo. It is part of mission to raise leaders. To pray and commission leaders. Mission has not stopped. Mission cannot stop. It doesn't matter what the world is doing. The Jesus, Jesus will see the travail of his soul. And he shall be satisfied. How else do we respond? Number two. We should become agents of divine exchange. Let me read that Matthew chapter 11, 28 all the way to 30. Come to me. All ye, everyone. 
who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's a divine exchange. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lonely in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. That is divine exchange. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. You are fully responsible for the following. Number one, to exchange your heavy laden for rest. You are fully responsible for your rest. You need rest in life. It's your duty to receive it. Number two, you are responsible for the yokes over your souls to be laid down. Yoke is that thing that has joined itself with you so that everywhere you go, it goes with you as a problem. And nothing can fit in there better than sin. Sin is a yoke. Everywhere you go, it escorts you. It blocks your way. It condemns you. It judges you. It controls your behavior. So subsequently, controls your destiny. But there is a simple invitation today that says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. There is a call for somebody to enter rest. Our rest begins the day we receive this divine exchange. Our, day, our rest begins the day we say, Jesus, I receive this divine exchange. Take over my burden of sin and make me whole. There is somebody here this morning, either here or watching us rather this afternoon, online, that must lay down the burden of sin, the burden of sin and shame before him in this altar. And say, Jesus, I will not leave this place the way I came. I need to trade my sin for righteousness. I need forgiveness. I need to walk out of this church free. I need to walk out free. If you're that individual, lift up your hand. I want to pray for you. You're saying, I want to walk out of here free from sin. Free from the burden of the sin I carried. I want salvation. I need help. If you're here, lift up your hand and I will pray for you. We are all saved. Shall we be upstanding? It's time to loosen your tongue to begin to implement the finished work on Calvary. At this point, I will not pray for you. I will pray for myself. It's your responsibility to pray for yourself. Jesus said, come unto me. I cannot go on your behalf. You've got to open your mouth and begin to decree. What is finished is finished in your life. Affliction will not rise up the second time. Open your mouth and say, my father, my father, you have finished it on my behalf. I stand now on the finished work in, on Calvary to receive my completeness. I am complete. Affliction shall not rise up the second time. Now open your mouth and turn that confession into prayer. Pray like a Pentecostal. Pray like somebody that believes that affliction will not rise up the second time in your life. Affliction will not rise up the second time in your family. Jesus has finished it. What, it has fini what he has finished, the devil will not repeat it. The devil will not resurrect it. Open your mouth and pray. 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 Rata pa 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 pa. Reke posota yaba shanta laba. Yeke re 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 re. This is a good week. Tell the devil, you will not raise your ugly head against me and my family this week. Whatever God has finished, it is finished indeed. Ma pa 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 pa. Open your mouth and shout against the enemy. To intimidate the enemy. Harass the, 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 the hell. Harass the enemy. Harass him properly.
Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We are living in a perilous time. We are living in the most dangerous time. You cannot afford to be a passerby in this time. You must be fire, moto, moto. For the enemy not to mess around with you. Because today is Mission Sunday. You are going to pray the final prayer. You are going to say, my father, my father. I break the backbone of wickedness. In our society. In our nation. In our continent. All over the world. I pray for Afghanistan. Let the light of the gospel shine in Afghanistan. Kenya, Kenya, you shall not swallow us. Let the power of God, the power of revival, move in our land. Let there be salvation, salvation of souls. Open your mouth and pray. Pray for salvation. Pray for salvation. Pray for revival. Pray for the move of God. Pray for the Holy Ghost. For the move of God. 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 Rapa papa papa. Reke po so tayaba. Shara papa papa papa. Yeke ye 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 ye. Bari ma son tarama shikaya. Banta la masekaya. Banta rapa papa. Yeke ye ye. Bari papa bo. Banta rapa so tayaba shikaya. Holy Spirit stretch your hands to the heavens we need him more than ever before hey we need him now not tomorrow we need him wickedness has multiplied hell has enlarged itself because of the number of people that are being buried every day out of all the people dying how many are going to heaven? My God, my God, my God. Darkness will not overshadow light. It has never happened. Evil shall not triumph over good. Wicked people shall not rule over us. Every grave that has been dug for you this week, I push your enemies that have dug them into that grave. Satan, you are a loser. You shall lose this week. Satan, you are a loser. We thank you for the finished work on cover. We thank you for your power at work in us. We thank you for the revelation of your word. Jesus, you said it is finished. We put, oh God, the seal of your blood upon our society, upon the lives of your people. We command salvation, 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 deliverance all over the land. Thank you. God, as our hands are lifted up, we bow our heads before you. We surrender to your will. You said in Matthew chapter 5 that we are the light of the city. You said that our light should shine brighter and brighter. God, every single individual here is a carrier of light. Everyone in this church is a candle. A candle. I blow over your candles. Let the wind of the Holy Ghost blow over your life. That wherever you go this week, darkness will disappear. Sickness will disappear. Oppression will disappear. Shame will disappear. Death will disappear. Shout, I am the light. Father, receive all the glory. Receive all the honor. It is settled. It is finished. 
in Jesus mighty name we are praying let's celebrate 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 hallelujah